Good luck. <clears throat> What's up, YouTube? Back at you with another video. Um, as a matter of fact, back at y'all with another quick take, more so a hot take. I wasn't going to do uh, a video about this, but honestly, I just feel compelled to do so because these are things that need to be talked about or perspectives that need to be talked about. And the truth, more importantly, needs to be talked about. I got my brother here. The most charismatic man in entertainment. Percy Brown, thank you for having me. My brother. All right, so we got a bit of a situation here, man. We got um, a guy, a content creator named Heavenly Controller, um, another content creator, both successful, very well known, by the way, named Long Beach Griffey, and an OnlyFans content creator and streamer, I guess, named Lil Etchy Girl. Have you ever heard of any of those two? Nope. Not a uh, shot. So what happened was uh, Lil Etchy Girl, <laughs> Lil Etchy Girl, <laughs> uh, uh, oh my gosh, Lil Etchy Girl accused Heavenly Controller of sexual assault, which is a big deal, like, you know, that's a situation that needs to be taken very seriously. Right. But the story is a bit elaborate and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a couple of pieces in it that stand out to me. And then I'll get your opinion from there. Perfect. I propose a hypothetical pretty much. So she says, when I first met Anthony, it was 2019 and I had just started my journey as a cosplayer. I was 18 years old, about to turn 19. I had seen Anthony follow me on my Twitter account, now deleted Twitter account, and freaked out about it. Now, I watched the video, and Shorty was acting like Prince or Michael Jackson started following her. Like, she freaked the fuck out. Like, you know. Of course. And in my head, I'm like, I don't know who he was to her or how she viewed him, but instantly she pedestalized this dude. So, obviously, following, you know, um, him following her, you know, obviously was a big deal. She said, at that exact moment, he followed me. I was streaming on Twitch and had freaked out because one of my favorite creators at the time had followed me. She said, directly after this, Anthony and I, listen, directly after this, Anthony and I began a friendship that was extremely flirtatious. At the time, I was in a complicated and volatile relationship with my current boyfriend. I did explain to him my situation with my boyfriend. And regardless, Heaven and I were meant to meet the following November for anime uh, NYC. You know, I'm, I guess I'm gonna skip a couple of these parts because this is this. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna read this part. I was obviously right. excited for this and felt special knowing that someone I looked up to a lot was giving me the time of day and asking to see me in person. He didn't make me feel like just a fan. Now, I'm already gonna go in on this because this is something that, as far as I've seen on Twitter and otherwise, people are not talking about this. My problem is you had a boyfriend. What kind of chick has a whole, has a extremely flirtatious friendship, or she said extremely, yeah, extremely flirtatious friendship when you got a boyfriend? Like, d does that not sound wrong to anybody? Like, yo, what's your opinion on that, bro? Uh, and, and that's the key word. That's why I didn't want to say nothing until you finished, because I think I know where this is going. But the key word was, she said, still current boyfriend. So they, they're still together. So something tells me, I won't jump into conclusions yet because I'm want i curious to see what you say after. Right. But I think uh, this all stems from the boyfriend aspect. Like you said, she has a boyfriend. Right. She shouldn't be doing this, but she was probably being sneaky about it because I'm pretty sure uh -huh. every 18, 19 year old is sneaky when you know, you're cheating on somebody because yep. that's technically cheating. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty sure she had intentions to cheat because the way how she phrased it was, I looked up to him. I was I was amazed that he followed me. So already in your mind, you're already thinking, what can I get out of it? Now, she's not going to admit to that because the, the key word is boyfriend. So right. uh, for now, I'm going to reserve my opinion. But yeah, I think I yeah. know what's wrong with this. But I'm, I'm just going to say, a lot of girls, you're already wrong from jump if you have an extremely flirtatious friendship. It's not a friendship. Because the definition of, of flirting, I don't even have to look this up because grown-ass adults know what that means. It's banter of sexual nature, like playful sexual nature. You know what I'm saying? When I flirt with a girl, there's some intention behind that. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you say somebody is, is attractive today, it's because you're flirting with them. That's, that's flirting. 
Like, oh, you know, you look handsome. Oh, yo, you look, you're looking kind of pretty today. That's flirting. You don't do that to just friends. You know what I'm saying? And she said it extremely flirtatious. So she took it to the 10th power. So not only were you guys flirting, it's not like she said, oh, we're flirting here and there. No, she said we were extremely flirtatious. When you got a boyfriend, what are you doing that for? But anyway, <laughs> you know. Yeah, let's continue. Let's continue. Exactly. Let's, let's continue. Where this is going. So then she says, when the time came, I landed in um, New York City and spoke with Andy most of the time. Um, I was there. I invited Anthony over to my Airbnb with my mother and my good friend, Joey. We all three hung out and played Smash and drank Smash, a.k.a. Um, Super Smash Brothers, and drank a bit of wine. Anthony would occasionally, listen, Anthony would occasionally put his hands on me and caress me. And me being nervous, I just kept quiet and would occasionally get off the couch and offer food or just pretend to grab something from my bedroom in the Airbnb. Now, I'm just going to continue. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to continue. Yeah, just keep rolling. Keep rolling. She says, eventually, Heavenly, which is the guy who got accused, left. And so did Joey, who I guess Joey was a man's. I'm not I'm not sure she ever mentioned in my name. Um, so she said the next day, November 17, 2019, Heavenly invited only me to go to his Airbnb and hang out with him and his friends. I didn't tell him, but I brought Joey and my longtime friend Desi with me to put space between us because he was heavily flirting with me and trying to put his hands on me. I told oh him many times that I had a boyfriend, although our relationship was rocky and that I wasn't interested in being his girlfriend or having anything with him because I was working things out and trying to create a boundary that I felt shouldn't have been crossed out of respect for myself and my on and off again boyfriend. As I oh said, God. I did occasionally be cheeky toward him because I was in a complicated relationship, but never really fanned that flame to the point where I would be severely betraying my relationship. Now, I'm nah. just, go ahead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, I swear to God, that, that, I mean, this has to be a joke. That, it has to be a joke. Like, first of all, if you, if you, don't want to cross any boundaries with you know being in a relationship. Why are you even flirting with the dude in the be uh, to begin with? I'm you know his right. intention. Th and th this is the problem I always have because this is not the first time I heard stories like this. You intentionally flirt with a guy, right? And you saying s specifically, he was a guy that you you know when you saw he followed you, you know your eyes beamed out. You were smiling. You was oh my god, is this really happening? Is he following me? And then now all of a sudden. It, it, it was just a friendship. It was nothing more, nothing less. And you just wanted, you didn't want nothing to happen. But you, you basically just said that it was a very flirtatious relationship. You knew you was going to see him when you went to New York. So I, I, you know, come on, like, this is already a bad setup. Now, I don't know how the story ends, but it's already a bad setup. What do you think? So this is my thing. You doing all of that when you got a boyfriend. Just be with your boyfriend. Now, here's some context. Because this is all just what she wrote. Now, Long Beach Griffey, who was friends with Heavenly, said that he saw her on TikTok. Like, she made a promiscuous TikTok post or some kind of TikTok post. And he was like, yo, who was that? Turns out, Heavenly was already talking to her. And he was like, yo, yeah, yo, yo, I'm about to fly out this chick. He flew her out first class. He was like, yo, I'm about to fly out this chick, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Da, da, da. And then um, he showed him text messages. And then the text messages that he got, you know what I'm saying, were like, yo, we're going to cuddle. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Extremely flirtatious. So there's already like, yo, I'm going to do this, that, and the third when I finally come and see you. You see what I'm saying? Now, right. I hope this is the same chick because apparently this might be, you know, a whole nother girl. But this is the one that I, this is the chick that I seen putting shit out. She's the one who put shit out there. So, you know, I'm just going to rock with that. But she's already wrong. Women who do that, you're wrong. And I'm, I'm just going to say in my experience, there's no such thing as friendships between men and women. And then even if there is, oh, there's always one party involved that would be in a relationship with the other person if given the opportunity. You see what I'm saying? And she makes a point to constantly mention, oh, my on again and off again boyfriend. Like, why do you keep mentioning that? And she said on Twitter, she was like, yo, yeah, I was just using him as a potential rebound just in case me and my boyfriend didn't work out. She said that. 
It's a setup. This is why this is why I said the keyword was boyfriend. Because I already know how this is going to end. I know exactly why that she's. I'm not going to say it now because I'm waiting to finish. But I don't know what he did. I don't know if he actually forced her. But considering what she's given now, the facts that you've given me, the facts that she's given, it sounds like uh, you know, she was uh cheating a little bit, and uh, she, uh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna wait till you finish. I'm gonna wait yeah, till you finish. Yeah, so she then says, the night we all hung out, he was upset with me. Oh, no, no, no. No, she said, regardless, I wanted to be friends with Heavenly because I looked up to him and wanted to be involved in his life and have a relationship with him, whether it was platonic or not. So she was already fiending just to be, you know, around, even if it meant like disrespecting her, her boyfriend. Of course. I don't know homie's opinion on that, but that's just, you know, mad disrespectful anyway. So she's already, she already been out of pocket from jump. Then right. she says, the night we all hung out, he was upset with me for bringing my friends and either ignored them or mistreated them. If I didn't bring my friends, it would have it would have just been me and a bunch of guys with Alice, who was another content creator, but, you know, whatever. Being there, who was already drunk when I arrived. It was Heavenly, it was, it was Heavenly, Long Beach Griffey, Alice, and some other guys whose names I can't remember. I was 18 at the time, so she must be, like, 21 now. And I didn't like to drink so much. However, everyone was drinking... And he and his friends cheered for me to chug a bottle of Sunny D and vodka oh that they made. They told me to go home if I wasn't going to drink with them, which you could have just went the fuck home. So, and of course, but you know. exactly. So I drank it, wanting to spend time with all of them and enjoy my 19th birthday in a way I thought I would. I thought it would impress Heavenly and his friends. Why is she flexing to impress people? So then you're trying to <laughs> you be know, you, exactly like, you so know. now you're being fake with yourself to keep it real with somebody else. So you had no business being at a club when you haven't even grown enough to, to say, yo, you guys can drink. I can enjoy myself without drinking. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. where's your father? Where are your parents at? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have been there in the first place. So you Already at this point, prior to anything going down, are a victim of circumstances that you created around yourself. Because I can be around people smoking weed. That doesn't mean I have to smoke, even if they offer right. it to me. I could be in a room with people, you know, drinking. That doesn't mean I have to drink just because they are. Who do I have right. to impress? They about to put one in your pocket? It's because she was trying to get some kind of outcome at the end. Like, oh, let me be around these people. Let me get their acceptance because I'm trying to be down. So you, mm -hmm. this was a means to an end. Come on, bro. Like, and people are, are ignoring this. Well, let me go on. So then she says, so I drank it once, spent time with all of them and enjoy my 18. Blah, blah, blah. Remember, I was 18 years old in all caps. She said, these are people. These people are all in their mid to late 20s. After doing this, Anthony and I took a photo together and he posted on his Instagram. Of course, his fans immediately began insulting me. This is besides the fucking point. Um, so she said. I went to the bathroom and when I came out, everybody was gone. The front door was open and I could hear everyone downstairs getting ready to leave in the Uber to the club. So I went to the living room to get my phone, blah, blah, blah. When I went to grab my phone, Anthony, she's talking about Heavenly, I guess, who was hidden behind a wall outside of the view from the bathroom, snuck into a corner and grabbed me by my waist and held me against his body and was talking down to me about how bad he wanted me and how he wanted to have a quickie. <laughs> <laughs> I kept trying to get away from him, but he started to kiss my face and tried to kiss my mouth. But I pushed him away, grabbed my phone. I had multiple missed calls and texts from Joey, who I guess is her man's, who she should have been with in the first place. <laughs> right. Who was outside waiting for me. And all of this was going on. But you got a man's whatever. The front door of the building had a buzzer, so he couldn't come upstairs to get me or see what was going on right after the incident. So I'm assuming once she pushed him away, he stopped. Right. right. So once, once she was like, nah, physically, he stopped. Desi was waiting for me in the hallway, da, 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 blah, 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 blah. So all I see is a whole bunch of motherfucking Joey's and shit. Uh, Heavenly followed me out and kept asking that I leave with him instead of Joey. I told him I came with Joey. So it's only right. I don't leave without him. So I and Joey left for the club. I didn't say anything. However, Joey said a few things about what he remembered from that night, included in the blah, blah. So mind you. So not only after the alleged sexual assault, they went, she still hung out with them after the fact. Of course. So she said, we went to the club and Anthony bought me about two or three drinks. So now, so after, after you were quote unquote sexually assaulted, you went to a club with the guy who sexually assaulted you. He bought you two or three drinks and you fucking got drunk 
Why would you take the drink from somebody that you don't even feel comfortable right. around? You don't know what's in that drink. So I don't care if you 18 you know, years old or not. Like, if you were raised right, you don't move like that. Like, was it really, was that encounter really that bad if you just went with the dude anyway? So exactly. Like, I don't, I don't get it. So then she says, there are videos of me stumbling around and sitting on the couch with Joey, Anthony, and Alice. Alice was super drunk as well and kept on grinding on me and dancing on me as if we were sit as we were sitting. Um, she alleged that, you know, Shorty made out with her, you know, without her consent. How do you make out with somebody without their consent? Right. I, like, how you kiss somebody without their consent? I mean, you probably can force it, but how do you make out with somebody without, without their consent? Their- right, Th- exactly. This is my thing before I go on. Like, dog, you shouldn't have been there in the fucking first place. Like, these are not your people. These are not your friends. You you felt like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to impress them, but obviously you saw what type of time he was on. So if you were with Joey, tell Joey how you feel and go the fuck home. Why are you following these people to a club when you don't like them? Right. Like, this is not no movie. So, so then she said, I'm genuinely surprised that these videos of her getting turned out in a club, you know, uh, have not surfaced anywhere to her knowledge. Um, basically, you know, a whole bunch of malarkey. From the beginning, Heavenly kept telling people I was joining his harem, which I guess is a group of women, and that he owned me when I was literally just a fan of him. I didn't talk about this ever because if someone were to look at the situation from the outside, the automatic assumption would be that I cheated on my boyfriend or was just being a hoe. I only gained the courage to talk about that weekend because a friend of mine shared her experience with Anthony. So I don't even know what the other girl said. I didn't even see none of that. But what you think, bro? Come on, man. Come on, man. So here's the thing, right? And I don't want to sound like a a douchebag, right? Because I wasn't there. I can't get, I I don't know all the facts, right? But based off what I've just heard, based off what she said, here's what it sounds like. It sounds like the key word, like you said, she keeps repeating it off again, off again, boyfriend. So she's, her, her boyfriend is off having a rough time. Her favorite, uh, you know, content creator follows her, right? She sees an opportunity. Now, in no right mind, first of all, like you said, you're in a relationship. You shouldn't be flirting with somebody, right? But let alone that, you flirt with somebody that you look up to, that you admire, that you love, right? So yep. you know you're going to see him in New York. Um, you, you're flirting with him. Like, you, like she said, it is an overly flirtatious friendship, now, you set yourself up failure when you do that. When you're flirting with somebody constantly, you know what their intentions you're setting are. Setting the tone, right? You're setting the tone. You're going to meet them in a different environment, and like you said, all these circumstances. She, they told her if she didn't want to drink, she can leave. She stayed. Um, she said he assaulted her, but she went to the club anyway and accepted drinks from him. Um, the same guy that assaulted you. The right. same guy that assaulted you, you took two, not not two, but three drinks from the right. same dude that just assaulted you. Like, when I was 18, I fucking knew better. You see what I'm saying? Like, other women that I knew who were also 18 years old when I was 18 years old, these chicks knew better. Like, right. she, because she allowed herself to be on the receiving end of all of that because she was trying to get clout. She right. was trying to be part of them, too, because, again, she was a streamer. Or is a streamer. She makes only fans content. So you was trying to get lit. She right, got ten thousand. Right. She got ten thousand. You know, followers on Twitter right now. So she trying to use that to her man. She opportunist. But go on, my bad, bro. You know, all this, all this stems from, and the key word again is boyfriend. I think the boyfriend kind of started getting a whiff. Something happened, and you know, to cover it up. This is what she's saying. I, again, I could be wrong, but based off the details, based off the facts that she said herself, something tells me, you know, this reminds me of the James Franco situation, right? And I think James Franco have done very terrible things. I'm not saying that, but this one situation that happened a couple years ago where two actresses from, I think it was NYU or one of the schools that he was uh, teaching at, um, they agreed to do a new scene and a project that he was filming for class because they thought they thought that if they did it 
they would get casted in a movie of his. So they did it. And they didn't get cast in any of his movies. And then they claimed that he harassed them. This is what it sounds like. It sounds like someone who saw an opportunity, you know, enjoyed the opportunity. But then the boyfriend, the cold, the, 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 the boyfriend still laying around. She, mm -hmm. she can't get rid of him. So he found out. And this is a cover up. This how I this is what it sounds like. Again, I could be wrong. Right. I could be a douchebag. But based off the details, no, you're not what that. she said, what she's, I, I've never heard of, it, it's like, let's say I stab you, right? If I stab you, would you come to my house again tomorrow to get stabbed again? That exact, like, exactly, like, exactly. Like you are putting yourself in harm's way. You are putting yourself <laughs> in harm's way. And I, right, like, I'm going to tell you what sexual assault is. There was a woman in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, like just the other day. And she was walking down the street. I don't even know if you might have saw this on the internet. She was walking down the street. I don't know how late it was. Basically, a guy walks up behind her, gropes her ass, like just grabs her ass, like just 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 touches her inappropriately. And then when she goes to defend herself, he 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 punches her three times. So that's sexual assault. Oh yeah, assault. I've heard about because, that. Yeah. Because it says sexual. What is sexual assault? It says the term sexual assault refers to sexual contact or behavior that occurs without explicit consent of the victim. Finaling or unwanted sexual touching, obviously, in this case scenario, and or forcing a victim to perform sexual acts, such as oral sex or, you know, all that shit. Now, here's in his defense, because mind you, I don't watch heavenly controller videos. I didn't even really even know the guy. The I only reason why I even know about this is because of a guy named PS360 HD2 who tweeted about it. And it, well, he didn't tweet about it directly. It was kind of like a subliminal. I was like, well, what is he talking about? And then when I kind of started to look, I found out what happened. So when she was hanging out with him the first time with her family at the house, when he was caressing her, like touching her on the couch and stuff like that, anybody that that's any guy that's been around women will know if a girl don't want to like, don't want you to touch her. Like, even if she might not say it physically, she'll motion to you like, yo, that she don't want to be touched. Like she'll kind of move right. off to the side or move your hand. Over. So let's say like I'm in the car with it, with a random girl. And then, and then I reach my hand over and I put my hand on her thigh. So I'm moving my fingers around. If she does not want to be touched, she'll move her thigh away from me. Or she'll say, right. oh, don't touch me, please. But instead, she said she was nervous. So she never said anything. And she thought that, and mind you, this is a guy who apparently doesn't get social cues. Because I'll talk about him in a minute. Because he's wrong, too. There's, I, there's things that I don't agree with. But this is a guy who doesn't get social cues. So if he doesn't already get social cues, you're, you're trying to convey that you don't want to be touched in the most indirect way possible, which is going to pretend to get something outside of the house. Because let's say if every time I put my hand on this girl and she gets up right then and there, I'll kind of get it. But if we've been flirting, you know, talking about how we're going to cuddle and do this, this and that the whole entire time, then then me touching her on the couch fits the scenario that we created. Right. Because we set the tone. Through text. So when you finally show up, I'm not going to think I'm wilding if I go and reach over to touch you. We've been talking about it for I don't know however long we were texting. So she could have just motioned away and been like, please don't touch me or just like visibly make it. No, like I said, we've all been in those scenarios. So he was just breaking the touch barrier. You never told him no. So he's not going to do some shit in front of everybody. But when y'all finally got by yourselves, that's when he was like, yo, all right, I'm going to try to go ahead and do something. You because we weren't there, but as far as it seems to me, he thought like, yo, this girl likes me. She's having it. So I'm not doing anything wrong by trying to touch a girl that told me she wanted to cuddle with me. If we're talking about the same. Exactly. Girl. You see what I'm saying? So, again, he made an attempt. He made his move Like because I'm just putting myself in his shoes. So I'm like, yo, all right, I'm going to see if she's with it. Maybe. I mean, I don't know if I would wait that long. Or I don't know if I would wait. You know, like I said. But he waited until everybody was gone to try to make it known, like, yeah, yo, like, this is what I'm trying to do. She pushed him. She waited till he actually did something to actually put, physically say no, because she didn't verbally say no. She said physically she said no. She didn't have nothing happened after that. She didn't say, oh, he he continued to, to press himself. Or she didn't say any of that. He made an attempt. He was probably like if, when she was when she was saying when she was pushing him away, he, he was probably like, yo, like. We were talking about cuddling and having sex or whatever it is that they were saying. Right. And now she wants to push me off. It probably took him a minute to process that. But once he was like, oh, she's not with it, he stopped. So given given the circumstances, why would you go to the club with him after the fact? 
Right. When you got a whole boyfriend at home. Or you got a boyfriend with you. <laughs> like, on top that of that. Course. So all of this is happening when your boyfriend is there. You guys must be really on and off. Because that just must have been an off moment where you just letting some other dude do do whatever to you. Because like I said, what she should have done, and this is how this is how smart girls are. This is how mature women are. And I don't care. You 18 years old, doesn't fucking matter. There should have been a disclaimer from Jump because he flew her out first class from wherever she was to L.A. As exactly. As, from what I heard. Most girls should be like, yo, or this is how girls that I've been around would say, this doesn't mean anything. Like, I hope you don't think that, you know, this means we're going to, you know what I'm saying? Because I do have a boyfriend. I just want to let you know so nothing happens. That's how girls are. That's what real women do. Women don't just, you know, accept free gifts and, 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 and just, to, just to try to get a certain outcome. You don't have anybody to blame but yourself. You have nobody to blame but yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's my opinion on Shorty. Well, here's, here's the thing, too, and, and you mentioned it before about sexual assault. If when he dealt with sexual assault, then, you know, the police should just be locking up almost every dude around because we, we will all be guilty of doing something like that at Facts. some point in our life. Facts. So, I, I mean, this is a situation where I feel like she she had a, a weak moment. You know, she yeah, she, no weak she moment. Was, oh, I'm saying weak because, you know. Um, but she deliberately was talking to a guy that she was very interested in and followed and Facts. you know loved. Uh, she saw an opportunity, but the boyfriend was around. Uh, then she almost got caught by the boyfriend. So it's only uh, uh, she admitted what other choice. She right. admitted to using this guy for a rebound because because a nigga asked her. He was like, "Yo, like, like, so what's up?" He was like, "She said, she said, yeah, you know, yeah, I use it for a rebound. Like, I would go and find the shit." But like I said. She came out of her own mouth and said that. And in fact, a couple of weeks ago, she posted a provocative, sexual, half-naked picture. Nigga Heavenly responded. Like, you know, like, oh, yo, like this picture is fire or some shit. Like, obviously, she's fucking naked. So you know what he mean by it. You know exactly why he's, he's responding. Because he finds you sexually attractive. And she responded to him like it was all good just two weeks ago. I'm talking about like August 4th. So was he really that bad of a guy? Did he really sexually assault you to the point where you were... You were afraid for your safety and well-being if you went to the club with him after the fact and you're still in contact with this man now. Like, come on, bro. Right. Come on, No, man. you know what and it is? Like I said, it, the key word is the boyfriend. It's, it, it reminds me of somebody I, I know went through the same thing and we, we all knew what was happening because we, we knew him and we knew the girl. He was, you know, sleeping with this girl. She had a boyfriend, you know, she was cheating on him. Then he found out she said rape. So I mean, it, yeah, to try to try to cover, try to cover right. her facts. And I'm gonna tell you something. See, everything, all the hate towards this man would be justified if after she pushed him away, he was like, "What? You're gonna push me away? No, no, get over here." That is sexual assault. That is sexually assault because when you know for a fact that what you're doing is unwanted and you continue to do it anyway, if a girl tells you don't touch me and you keep touching her anyway, that is that's assault. Right. Me, you, me genuinely not knowing, like, because all he did was follow the narrative up until that point. He didn't know it was a problem until she made it clear that it was a problem. But he was like, oh, like, we've been talking, we've been texting back and forth. You got a man, you still come see me anyway. I'm putting my hands on you and you're not doing nothing. Right. He was following the narrative that you facilitated, that you created, yeah. because a man can only go as far as a woman will allow him to. That's a fact. That's why when your girl cheats on you, you don't get mad at the dude. You get mad at the girl because she had to open herself up to that. No one told her to sit there and respond to this man's text. Nobody told her to sit there and, and go to the club with this dude to accept multiple drinks. Like when if you were raised correctly, you wouldn't have been there in the first fucking place. And then again, so she's not, oh, his victim. She's a if she's a victim at all, she's a victim of her own decisions, right. circumstances that you created. Because, again, if I'm texting some chick for X amount of time and, and she's like, yeah, yo, I can't wait to see you. You know, I'm going to hold your hand. Like, like stuff that girls be telling you. You know what I'm saying? Like, stuff that girls will tell you in anticipation of y'all finally linking up. Like, we're going to do this. I'm going to do that with you. I'm talking about not with anybody else, but, like, with you. If a girl's telling me that she wants to cuddle, I already know what time it is. And if we're talking right. about the same chick, he was following the narrative. And then once you realize, oh, it's not, you're not on that type of time. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. And then, yo, 
she came to the club anyway to be nice because he got bread. He's a successful YouTuber. He got her a couple of drinks. He would. No one had a gun to her head like, yo, oh, yo, yo, you better drink. You better drink these drinks now or we're going to ruin your reputation. You know, um, if you don't do X, Y, Z. No, no, you didn't have to be there. You 18, you grown like you're officially grown. You're officially grown. And then especially, you know, you're not supposed to be drinking if you're 18 fucking years old. So then that means you really weren't raised right. I mean, because she on OnlyFans. So we already know she's not raised right. Come on. Like, right. like, let's be real for a second. And I don't even really judge women who make OnlyFans. But in this case, you know, I'm going to judge you because it seems like she's just making shitty decisions left and right. So don't blame this dude. Now, I'm going to tell you where Heavenly, you know, went wrong. You knew she had a boyfriend. Now, my policy is that I know you got a man's so you automatic throwaway. I'm not rocking with some chick that is willing to hang out with me behind the scenes when she got a man the whole entire time. What does that say about her character? What does that say about her character, about who she really is? Men and women can't really be friends. You know what I'm saying? Because this is it. Because women like her is exactly why that like platonic friendship between men and women in this day and age gets such a bad rap because she blurs those lines. Oh, we had an extremely, you know, flirtatious friend like friendship. I, I have mad female. I don't flirt with them. Like I have, a, I have a chick that I call and we talk on the phone every night. I don't ever flirt with her. Friends don't do that. And if I am flirting with her, like, oh, yo, yo, you was looking mad good today. Da, da, da. Is she really your friend at that point? Exactly. So that's his fault. Because how you get them is how you lose them. In this case scenario, he pursued a chick who is sneaky, is an opportunist, who does like mad shit to just get outcomes. She was willing to sit. So she's really, okay, so let's say, and she's really just this innocent girl on the inside. What you were willing to do to build a platform or a name for yourself was, was lead, a, a, lead a man on, freaking be an alcoholic, sit there and make out with a chick when you know for damn sure you, you, you wasn't really with it. Like, don't use alcohol as an excuse. People act like, oh, just because, you know, we're, I, I get drunk, that means I'm just, I'm just this completely different person. No. You're, I've been drunk before. I'm, I remember all those moments when I was drunk. Like, I've never blacked out drunk before and if you're one of those blackout drunk alcohol kinds of people then you don't need to be drinking because right period so these are all the things that she was willing to do in the name of clout come on bro like let's be real for a second so heavenly he brought that on himself he brought that he on did. himself because at 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 his stage when you're a successful youtuber eight hundred and sixty eight thousand subscribers twitch partner you go to DreamCon. You do all this different stuff. You have a lot of shit to lose. And judging by the general consensus on Twitter, a lot of people were waiting for this nigga to fuck up. They're like, yeah, yo, I knew this nigga was a weirdo. Yo, I'm smoking that heavenly <laughs> pack. I'm smoking that Griffey pack. Meaning, me, meaning like they're smoking the ashes of somebody that died. That's what the fuck they right. mean. So that just goes to show you when you're young and you black with a platform and you getting girls and you're doing all this stuff, a lot of niggas want to see you fall. Because I don't, I'm not seeing a lot of girls talking about this shit. I'm seeing mad niggas. Niggas with, with, with picture, like anime characters for pictures. Talking shit. And that's fine. You could dislike the guy all you want. But it just seems like, yo, be objective about the situation. But it seems like people just, A, just want to be a part of the angry mob. Or they didn't like the guy to begin with. So what's your thoughts on, on, on this nigga, man? Um, first of all, the, I didn't even know he was black, so you know, I'm not gonna get to the whole racial thing, <laughs> but and she's um, not even black, she's Japanese and Puerto Rican, so she's not even black. No, but he is right, the yeah, he is black, yeah. So, um, how old is he by any chance? Mid 20s, like I said, I didn't really, I've seen his Twitter in passing, like, I've never really seen, like, like, I don't watch his videos, you know what I'm saying. In Long Beach, Griffey is another situation which I'm gonna bring up in a minute. But these guys, like I said, they're 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 around our age bracket, so mid late twenties. All right, um, you know, here's a, here's the reality of the situation. Um, we live in a day and age where a lot of people think downstairs before they think upstairs. So he probably right. seen a girl who's looking bad on Instagram. Um, and it's like, Ooh, I need to hit that. Or I need to get that. And I'm not a hypocrite. I've been, I've, I've made, uh, some questionable choices in my life growing up, you know, sleeping with girls who have boyfriends. So I'm not going to be the white knight in our, uh, white knight in armor and, you know, call him out and, you know, disrespect him. But I do agree with you. You, you lose them. How you, 
you lose him, how you get him. And um, I think he should have known once she's, she kept mentioning her off again, off again boyfriend, if she even mentioned that. But it sounded like she kept, she said that she told him he, she had a boyfriend, but her actions to say otherwise. So some tells me he knew she had a boyfriend. And but, continue to do it anyway. Right, because she was given uh, she was given in to him. So and, Facts. and then when the when the act occurred, because the the thing the thing that I keep thinking about is the boyfriend was downstairs the whole time. He could he didn't have a key to come upstairs. Right. So how do you explain why you're upstairs for you know five, ten minutes by yourself hey. with no yep. you know so, so um he He's not the only he's not the only dude. I've heard many stories of uh of um you know content creators or you know celebs or you know people with money uh flying girls out and doing things like this and you know hopes of getting you know getting laid. You know what? He tried, he failed, and now someone I, the, the the issue we live in nowadays and it's not even more so him but just our society is there's a it's so easy to to say sexual assault rape for things that may not even qualify because this situation right here isn't this is don't qualify it makes real victims look bad right this is a standard you know a do this is standard failure of a dude just trying to pick up a girl and didn't work that's what it sounds like it was a little more deeper than that but this is basically what it was it wasn't bill cosby slipping pills and drinks it wasn't you know uh what's his name uh drake drake from drake and josh you know know, pulling you know grooming a little kid um this is a dude who flew a girl out who was flirting with him he tried she rejected him she had a boyfriend and now she's trying to say something else happened. It, he stopped once she said no, get off me. He moved on. She came along with them for the ride. So it sounds like I don't know. I think something more happened, but she don't want to admit to it because the boyfriend is there. She sounds and weak. I think he, like you said, when you get to a certain point, you have to start thinking about the risk that comes with what you the do. Yep. So this is a wake up call for him. Stop flying out girls you don't know. Um, stop, you know, talking to girls with boyfriends because it never works. Because, like you said, you will lose them how you get them, and you need to be more cautious of how you approach women or what you do in your everyday life. Because, right, once people were just waiting for you to screw up. This is, yeah. I don't know if he could bounce back from this. I don't know the dude personally. I don't know this girl personally. But we live in a society now. Once people say rape, sexual assault, anything related to that. I don't know, you know, sponsors pull out, you know, people don't want to associate with you no more. And it takes a long time for that reputation to get cleaned up. So right. I don't know what happens to him, um, <clears throat> but, you know, I, I just hope he learns his lesson. Don't pick up girls from social media. Now, I'm going to say this. Now, his friend Long Beach Griffey, who was a guy that I don't like follow him closely, but sometimes I might watch his skits. And sometimes I might, you know, go on his Instagram and be like, oh, you know, what's he doing? You know what I'm saying? And I might look him up. So he came out in defense of Heavenly, who is his friend. And what people are really mad at him about is for a couple of things. But I guess I'll talk about the two prominent ones. The first one is that he was like, we need to hold victims accountable. Two, he released a skit that basically was like, I don't want to say mocking the situation, but it was basically like, you know, him being a girl who acts like she's super sexually interested in. And then she goes and has sex with the dude. And then the dude wakes up and the cop is the cop is pointing a gun at him like, oh, freeze, you're, you're under arrest, which is true. Now, this is my thing, because he broke down crying and stuff like that. And I feel like <clears throat> I'm going to give Long Beach. Yeah, I'm going to give Griefy, uh, uh his credit on this one, because you don't have a lot of friends out there that will stick their neck out for you. And take a lot of, like share in the backlash so like like you know what i'm saying like that's a loyal friend right there when i seen that i was like damn like you know most niggas won't do that they'll be like yo my name is bennett i ain't in it and then not not speak on it or come to your defense he came to his defense was like yo i was there the whole entire time i seen everything he's not this dude that be, that that people are, are painting him as but he was speaking in emotion so what he meant to say got lost in translation you know what i'm saying so Instead of him saying, oh, hold victims accountable, it's more so, my opinion is, there are women who weaponize the Me Too movement, which is basically, 
what this is. You know, there are women who who are like a boy who cried wolf. And meanwhile, you got real women who get sexually harassed and assaulted every day, you know, by men. And they don't get the help or support that they need because people are too busy supporting women who know damn well that wasn't really what it was when when you say it happened. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like for him, he kind of spoke preemptively. I get it. He said that he cut off heavenly. Like he said, he cut him off. He said he cut his boy off. I mean, like, you know, I get it because now because you spoke on it multiple times, you catching a lot of that heat, too, because people are looking at it like, oh, hold victims accountable. So you're saying that, you know, and I get that. But when again, I, everything that I said was based off of what she said. Right. And then I filled in some of the loopholes or the plot holes with what they said. And I'm leaning towards them because, again, you stayed in contact with this guy. You. So why even why even bring it up? If, if it was all that bad and if it was, you should have said something back then when it happened because he was a he was a famous content creator back then. If you're going to throw if, if, if the bus came back when that happened, because now we live in a in a in a, a matriarchal society where, you know, well, I don't say matriarchal society it has nothing to do with that. We live in a cancel culture era. You get tried by the by the public or you get tried by the media and you get found guilty by the media. And more often than not, people will run a lot farther with, with, with the lie and pay no mind to the truth or the obvious facts to the situation. You see what I'm saying? So that's my problem, you know, with, with Long Beach is that I think that I know what he meant to say. So that's why I didn't take it that way. Like I get, like I know when people try to say things and it comes out wrong, but I can kind of sift through the emotion and get to what he was actually, you know, what he meant to say. You right. know? So I don't feel like he should get canceled for that. He made a public apology, you know, about this shit. They banned them from this event called DreamCon, where a lot of YouTubers and content creators get together and they meet up. They condemn the whole entire situation just purely based off of what someone else said. And that's dangerous. If you're going to make those accusations, let them be legit, like legit. Don't just be saying stuff because someone else said it. And then, you know, you look back and you probably didn't get the 100 percent outcome that you wanted to get. So you're like, you know what? Yeah, let me let me go out and let me just throw this out there now just to make it it worse for dude. Because right. now we live in an era where, you know, if you're someone, a public figure, you can get a come up off of being a victim, dog. Like oh, you can. yeah. It's like it's like it's like. And mind you, if they're I'm not going to say that's just a byproduct. It's not it's not really on their part. But sometimes people know that and they use that to their advantage. That's like Rihanna. Rihanna freaking became the parallel to Beyonce after the Chris Brown incident. Mm -hmm. Look at Saweetie. She she got, um, you know, she had that little elevator video thing with Quavo. And then look at her now. She got a whole, you know, new burger or meal with McDonald's. Megan Thee Stallion, she got shot in the foot last year. And I'm not saying this is deliberate. I'm just saying this is a byproduct. And some people will use that to their advantage. Do I think so? We, no, Sweetie didn't fake it. Megan Thee Stallion didn't fake it. Rihanna didn't fake it. But you, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are domestic violence issues. So that's a different fucking story. We actually right. saw it. You know, we saw Rihanna's face. We saw Megan Thee Stallion's foot. We saw, the, you know, the elevator footage. So they actually get a pass. But you, you don't have any of that. You know, she, in my opinion, is just incriminating herself. You know, so what's your thoughts on that, bro? No, it's basically like uh, to sum it up. It's basically what I said before. It's we live in a society now where the moment you say rape or sexual assault, that's it. You don't need no physical evidence. You don't need proof. Now, you know, Bow Wow said something. He said nowadays, when he have girls over, he makes them sign a release. You NBA. leave your phone at the door, and I have cameras in. Uh, around gotta, and you gotta do that. It, it sucks that you have to do that, but hey, you know what? At the end of the day, all it takes is someone to go up on on Twitter or Instagram talking about he 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 uh, uh, sexually attacked me, and that's it. Nobody really cares about your side. I mean, unless you have yep. evidence right then, right there, or eventually evidence come out the light. But even then, if it wait, if you take too long to prevent the uh, present the evidence, your career is over. So, you know, this is a classic case of. Um, someone taking advantage of uh, someone trying to, you know, get ahead in their career, yep. and the boyfriend found out. So you got to cover it up, and now these two going to pay the price for it. And it sucks that it happens like that. And you know, I, I don't fault him for you know sticking up for his buddy because I would too. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you know the situation. And um, 
I think, like you said, maybe he spoke prematurely. Maybe he jumped right off the gate the moment he heard about it and, you know, just started speaking. Because once you told me what he said, I kind of understood what he was saying, you know, hold victims accountable. I understood what he was saying, but, you know, when we're talking about something like this, you know, a lot of people aren't thinking that far. They, they already hate you the moment that came out. So um, I think these two um, have to find some. I don't even know what the – Unless they have some evidence, um, I mean, again, this wasn't you know a severe Bill Cosby um, kind of crime, so they could you know in a couple of months you know keep silent you know you know get out the limelight for a little bit, people forget about it, give give people some some space you know let the um, <laughs> Al Qaeda people take over for a little bit, right? People forget it, but. I think somebody um, did say that somebody did say it like it was, it's, it's going to be all good a week from now. Yeah. Just let it go. Because again, this wasn't a, a criminal offense. This, this is not something that if they went to court, they lose because obviously if they went to court, you know, they win. Um, so um, I think they should just keep quiet. Um, if they have evidence, maybe put the evidence out, but I'm not, they're not going to win this battle, unfortunately, because we we live in a society now where you you, you attack people first and then ask questions later. So, uh, yeah, but you know, even <coughs> my bad. The only thing that I think that the reason why it just won't go away is because you got other you know content creators like coming out and speaking on it. And I'm gonna say with this one, like I actually you know watch his videos sometimes, and. You know, I thought that he spoke on it and was so disappointed was because that they were friends. But then when I really was listening to what he was saying, he was like, yo, he would only talk to them once a year. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, they were just on some mutual respect, kind of like, yo, you're you're creator. I'm a creator. We came up around the same time. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, so you don't even know them like that. So why are you even talking about it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. And again, you know, I like him and everything like that, but that's just a question in my mind. I'm like, why are you so affected by it if you're not even really cool with them? I mean, you could just be, you know, like uh, baffled by the situation, <laughs> but you're not really all that close to it. Like I thought that he was, you know what I'm saying? And Clark you know, Jason. I mean, I, I just I just hate to say I just hate to see, you know, these these sorts these sorts of things happening because of the era that we live in right now. And I know sometimes you, you can't come back from everything because there's some stuff that the internet don't forget. You think R. Kelly can just come back and start coming out with music like nothing happened? Nah. Nah. Because when it comes to, like I said, like, you know, it, like not everybody's Chris Brown, bro. Like, you know, not everybody can beat the shit out of their, out of their, you know, significant other and then like be, you know, just as big, if not bigger than they were when the incident happened. Right. You know, not everybody is Quavo where Quavo can... I mean, he didn't really beat her up, but, you know, manhandle your girl in the elevator and then everything will just, you know, some people just won't care. You know, these guys, you know, are relatively, uh, you know, they're YouTubers, you know, they're Internet famous and their livelihood is built on public perception, how people feel about you. You know, people watching your videos, people commenting, subscribing, you know, what I'm saying supporting you. So when you don't have that support no more, it's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I feel like, hey. Heavenly, that's like a, just a learning lesson for this dude. Like, yo, you know, you got to filter these chicks out because I'm a type of guy. I, I got to know now. I got to know how you feel now because I, I don't want to be mistaken down the line. I don't want to wait till shit hits the fan for me to feel like, yo, you wasn't really, you know, you wasn't really on my team. You wasn't really feeling me. And that's just how you got to move in relationships, even when you're a regular person. Need way less to say when you're when you're a content creator, probably making six figures a freaking month like these dudes are doing, dropping, dropping regular skits. The next day, this shit got like 1.4 million freaking views. You know what I'm saying? No wonder he apologized because, yo, hey, you know, what happens if, you know, this shit, the views start to go down? And I've seen certain YouTubers, like a Spoken Reasons or something, where they were getting millions of views per video. And then now you look at their channel, it's not even the same thing. It's like a, it's like a shell of what it used to be. You know, yeah. not to say that he's any, any less of a content creator, but that's just the reality of the situation. Why? Over, over a woman? Over a girl? Over an opportunist, like like I said, yo, you gotta he gotta start watching more crime movies. You gotta watch Scarface or something because, like I said, when you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like you gotta have certain street smarts. Like why is she around me? You know what I'm saying. Let me let me watch her real quick and see how she moved because that's what I would do. Okay, I'm gonna fly you out. You know what I'm saying. We are gonna go out. I'm gonna chill with y'all and I'm gonna just see. I'm gonna peep the energy. 
I'm not going to be caressing or none of that. I'm going to wait for a, gr a girl to come to me. I'm not going to be, I flew you out here. So you got to be giving me that attention because I spent money on you. How much is a, how much does a, a, a first class ticket go for? I don't know. A couple of few G's just oh, for you yeah. to get here. It ain't cheap. Just for you to it get here. Cheap. So I'm not, I don't owe you any sort of physical interaction from me. You got to keep it player. Like, all right, I flew you here. I'm over here. Okay. I'm, I'm going to just, you know, play play the bench and see what you do. He should have known that. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, you know, money and clout and none of that don't actually buy you substance and like actually knowing shit. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes people got to, people got to, um, you know, go through certain things and make certain mistakes so you can learn from them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I already know. He should already know. That no girl that, that you're with after success ever wants you for you. Ever is going to want you for you. That's a fact. That's a fact. And chicks... When you are a millionaire or you're famous or whatever, want you for something. A girl is never just going to want to be around you just because you're attractive. Your physical looks take take the, the back of the bus to how much money you make and your status. How do you right. not know that? And that's why he got caught up. That's why he mm -hmm. got caught up because he started to buy into the illusion. Oh, I own women and I got a harem and all this stuff. Like I said, yo, if this thing is actually listen, listening to this shit, bro, get your mind right, man. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like you got all that money, get read you some books, Forty Eight Laws of Power, Rational Mail or something. They got books out there that'll tell you, you know, saying about how you know shit really is, especially in this day and age. Not even back in the day when those books were written, you know, about here right now. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I gotta say about that. You know, but disclaimer, like I said, there are real, you know, victims out there of sexual assault. I given all the information i don't know long beach i'm not a i'm not, i wouldn't call myself a fan just like a distant admirer i don't even know freaking heavenly this was just a situation that i wanted to just you know check out and see the evidence and see what conclusion i would come to and the conclusion that i came to is that this girl is an opportunist she is a fellow content creator just like them and she figured yo if i get in these circles and i get the cosign then I'll be able to build a platform for myself just based off of knowing them. And she was, if you're going to go about that, make sure that, because that's professional. So you were there for professional reasons. Don't be flirting with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Don't have no extremely flirtatious friendship when you, when you want it to be copacetic and professional. That's your fault. That's your fault. Right. You 18 years old. You were content creator. So you know what you, you knew what you was doing. You knew what you was doing. And that happened according to her in 2019. So now she's using that. So nothing happened because I don't know who the fuck she is. She was, she's just, just another chick on, on OnlyFans. Now she want to try to make a little come up before OnlyFans stop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh I was God. just thinking that. I was just yeah, thinking Stop that. promoting, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, adult content and stuff like that. So she, this is an opportunist we're talking about. All the facts are there. All the facts are there, dog. You know what I'm saying? Heavenly, you should have known better, dog. You should have known better straight up straight up money can't buy you a judge of character like some people they just don't know like you you know what i'm saying it's, it's like you got all these like, like these rich people who have these friends who stab them in the back it's like you know why because heavenly pride blew up at a younger age i don't like i said i don't really know the guy but it seems like he like when i look at his oldest videos he looked like a pretty young dude so he was like you know what i'm saying a little nigga you know what i'm saying but he still moved like that you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, Dame Dad said it best. Money, if you were lame, I'm not saying he's a lame dude, but having millions of dollars ain't going to change you from being a lame-ass nigga. If you're a lame-ass nigga, you're going to be a lame-ass nigga, and it's going to show. Right. In this case scenario, he moved foolishly in the way that he moves. And Long Beach, I just think he spoke prematurely, but that's a real friend. That's a real friend right there. You know what I'm saying? I hope when I hope a motherfucker's trying to cancel me, you come out and risk your platform <laughs> to defend a brother. Because that's real friendship. That's true friendship right there. Do cry for this dude. Do cry for this dude. See what I'm saying? And that's that's my thoughts on that. You can say, you know, what you gotta say, dog. Oh, amen. You know, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet because I don't want to put the people to sleep. But uh -huh. like you said, Long Beach, um, that's a true friend. And I think the only reason why. Uh, his opinion matters is because he was there yep. and he has details about it. If he was just a dude that you know knew him in grade school, I wouldn't really care that much because he yeah. uh, it's not much to offer. But he knew the situation. He understands what this could do to his friend and he's trying to do whatever he can to save his friend. And you know what? All hats off to him. I have no complaints with him. Heavenly, um, you know what? 
I'm not mad at the dude. You know why? Because when you're young and you have a lot of money and you grow up and, and you, I wouldn't say grow up, but when you blow up at a young age and you get handed so much money, you make stupid decisions. You make stupid yeah, decisions all true. the time. And he's not going to be the first one. Well, he, he hasn't been the first one. He won't be the last one. He won't be the last. Uh, of, of people or young men, you know, having money, <clears throat> you know, looking at Instagram influencers or fellow content creators, especially if they're starting up, you know, reaching out to them, flying girls across the, the, across the state lines to hang out with them. Look, like I said, whether you're famous, you know, broke, rich, poor, it don't matter. Be careful who you hang out with, who you try to sleep with, because you don't know their true intentions until they bite you in your back. So, um, <clears throat> you know, this is just something for everybody. You know, we were talking about him for a while, but this is for everybody. We live in a very dangerous time now. All it takes is one mistake. One. All it takes is one mistake. One. You upset the wrong person, and they That'd will come it. at you. And I don't. It's hard to bite that that reputation of being a sexual predator. So yep. be careful who you laying around with. Be careful yep. who you fly out to go see. Be careful of who you spend time with, because you never know their true intentions until it comes out. So yep. you know, you know. Hopefully, these two uh, these two brothers, uh, you know, can uh, find some peace and. You know, they can work through this and hopefully they can continue, you know, <clears throat> building a platform and take care of their families or, or, you know, family and friends or whoever they have to support. And, uh, you know, hopefully this woman, uh, whether she's telling the truth or not, she finds peace with herself um, uh, and man. that she, she can uh, she, move forward. She, she's not going to find peace for herself. She's just going to go ahead and just disrupt, <laughs> be disruptive to other people's lives and stuff like that. But. I'm going to end this with a proverb. I ain't Christian, but this is a, this is a proverb that actually fits <laughs> the situation. This is not all women because there are some great women out there that will be by your side, support you, and not take advantage. I ain't talking about those kind of women. Or the Bible's not talking about those kind of women. Proverbs 31.3. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. Facts. Facts. Because a woman will always Amen. be the downfall of a man. <laughs> always be a downfall Amen. of a man. Facts. Facts. And with that said, um, I hope y'all made it to the end of this video. It will be timestamped. And uh, yeah, I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.